Well, let's move to uh, uh, Radislav uh, from the international oil companies viewpoint. Please, go ahead. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I, thank you. I have a presentation here. What, what basically I'd like to do is to share with you the point of view from an oil and gas company on how we can integrate this uh, climate change uh, issue in the strategy of the company. So it turns as an example, but I think it can be, it can be useful actually to use that as a, a, not necessarily a reference, but at least a, an example. And to set the scene, I, I have to say, well, we're an oil and gas company. We sell oil, gas, electricity. We are part of the problem, no doubt. So we need to be part of the, of the solution. And we take this responsibility very seriously. And the, the, the main difficulty for us, if I want to summarize for your benefit, is on the one hand, we consider our responsibility is to provide energy to people who need it. And it was very clearly stated this morning that energy demand is going to increase. So we have to supply more energy, affordable, reliable, clean energy, but more energy. And at the same time, we need to reduce the carbon footprint of the, what we sell to our clients. And so joining the two together turns out to be quite, quite challenging. And on top of that, we have to do that at a profit because we, we're, we're in business. So basically, in, uh, in, uh, in, in a nutshell, uh, I, I'd like to tell you the way we look, we could actually try to achieve this kind of challenge which seems difficult. To do that, we take as a reference the two degree scenario of IE. I don't know whether this scenario is going to happen or not, but at least it's a good reference that we, we use. And when you, when you look at that, that's on the right hand side actually, well, on the, on the left side of the slide, but the right bars, you, uh, I think there are interesting things to note. The first one is that the share of oil, which is in dark blue, is decreasing between 2016 and 2040. But still, oil represents more than 20% of the energy mix. And as you all know, of course, we have to fight against the, the natural decline of uh, oil fields. So at the end, that's quite a significant amount of oil which has to be produced and brought to the market by 2040 in this two degree scenario. Now, if we assume that the uh, still demand for oil over the long run is going to decrease, we cannot uh, ignore the possibility that oil price would, would go down. And this is why it seems to us extremely important as a strategy to take that into account in order to already anticipate that trend and position ourselves on low break-even oil. Second, you see that gas is increasing in, uh, uh, in relative terms and in absolute terms uh, also. So clearly, and I share the views uh, that you mentioned, uh, Richard, that, that probably gas actually, yes, will be uh, 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 an energy that will be needed and demand for gas is increasing significantly. So definitely going and developing our activity uh, along the gas chain does make sense. And finally, of course, you can note that uh, what is called renewable, low carbon electricity is developing very fast as well. So we look at it as, a, as an uh, in energy company, as an opportunity to develop our, uh, our activity. But when we want actually at the same time to reduce the carbon footprint, it's clear that there are many different levers that we have to work on. And for us, it's clear that that's not by just following one path that will manage to improve our, our situation, but that's really by combining different levers together. I mentioned uh, five of them, and I'm going to run you through uh, those ones. The first one is, of course, energy efficiency. Actually, as an oil and gas uh, company, we consume energy. We are very large consumers uh, through the refining or even the production uh, activities. And so by reducing 
our, 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 our own energy needs by improving our energy efficiency. And I can tell you that's something that I think it's extremely uh, effective in terms of uh, uh, reducing at the end carbon emissions is something critical. The second aspect that uh, I, I want to mention is methane. You know that methane has uh, uh, impact in terms of CO2 equivalent uh, impact, which is much higher than the CO2. So we need also, and uh, OGCI was mentioned, as part of uh, OGCI, we are working with a group of companies to, to reduce actually, or uh, to calculate and reduce our methane emissions. And thirdly, carbon pricing, of course, is absolutely key because if there is no carbon price, there is no way. You talked about CCUS. It's good to be the, the, the last one because you can take everything which had been said already by different people. So I do appreciate that. But it's clear that without any carbon price, uh, it will be extremely difficult to, uh, to develop uh, uh, CO2 battle because, uh, of course, uh, uh, you need to give a price to the negative impact that it can have in order to combine business models with uh, 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 carbon uh, fight. So energy efficiency is number one. Clearly, gas is number two, and it seems uh, extremely important as uh, I, I bounce back on something which has been said already. But we have to keep in mind that wood, wood uh, gas replace coal in uh, electricity generation. Of course, this is just uh, this is difficult to imagine right away. But you mentioned no more coal plants. But if gas was to replace coal, we would save about five gigatons of CO2 emissions, which represents about 10% of what is being emitted worldwide today. So the, the, the objectives would be achieved right away. Of course, that's not going to happen, but that's to give you the, the order of magnitude of how gas can be effective, actually, uh, in particular for power generation, if it was to, to replace uh, coal. Third aspect is uh, low carbon electricity. I'm not talking electricity only, but low carbon electricity, because as it was rightly mentioned, it depends where electricity comes from. But uh, I think that for a company like ours, what is very important is not just to be on one aspect of electricity, but to really develop activities along the chain by producing electricity, trading electricity, selling electricity, and of course, having production coming from either gas through CGGTs or renewables that we want to develop in order to integrate actually this uh, low carbon electricity business. It is a growing business. There are some challenges in terms of economy because uh, sometimes it is challenging. We have to face it. But by integrating along the whole chain, we think that we can actually get uh, uh, decent returns along the chain for this uh, electricity, uh, low carbon electricity uh, business. A fourth aspect that has to be integrated is the biofuels. And here, public policies do help to a certain extent, as there are some uh, red one or more obligations which increase the level of incorporation of biofuels in uh, gasoline or uh, diesel. And you see from the past that actually demand for uh, biofuels has increased quite significantly. And so it's also an area that will develop further and uh, that we should capitalize uh, on. Well, as a matter of fact, we are first uh, uh, distributor of uh, biofuels in, uh, in Europe and produce biofuels ourselves. Uh, so that's uh, an area also that we see as an opportunity to uh, develop uh, further. Finally, and maybe more over the, uh, the longer run, but there is this issue of getting to net zero emission in the second half of the, the century. No doubt that this cannot be achieved without uh, negative emissions, compensation. 
and we still see two of them. One, of course, is CCUS, and again, uh, we, we, uh, for us, we, we spend quite some money, 10% of our R&D uh, programs in CCUS, but again, what is absolutely critical is to have a carbon price in order to promote a business uh, model for, uh, for CCUS, the other one being natural things like uh, forests, where also uh, there are some efforts to be made and uh, we initiated actually some, uh, some programs through our foundation. But what I want to, to get at is that at the end, I'm going to drop that one, it's, it's probably too, uh, too detailed, that by combining all these different levers together, we do genuinely believe that an oil and gas company like uh, ours can decrease gradually the carbon intensity of the energy products that we sell to our customers. And at the end, what counts is to be in a position to, to provide a service, to provide some products which have, for the same amount of energy, a lower uh, in a carbon intensity. And, and you see, we've uh, defined actually, that's an example, but that's uh, for us, what we have uh, uh, issued uh, about a month ago, say, okay, it's good to have words, but at the end, it's good to have ambitions and to measure what you want to, uh, to achieve. And so we have as an ambition, for instance, to decrease the carbon intensity of the energy products we sell to our clients by about 15%. You see here, it's uh, between NPS, uh, SDS scenario, but quite in line actually with the efforts that have to be done in order to contribute to uh, climate change uh, uh, challenge. And that's the way we, uh, we intend uh, to, uh, to do it. So this presentation is to provide a practical example of what a company, an oil and gas company major, can, can uh, have as an ambition in order to take into account to integrate climate change into a strategy. Thank you. Thank you, Ladislas. Could I ask one question? I mean, I think Total should have um, internal carbon pricing for the future investment decision. What is the price level now? It's about $40 per ton. Ah. So it's increasing. I mean, I, I talked with Patrick, it, he said 30. So it, does it reflecting the current uh, IPCC I'm report? I'm right, going to be very precise. Actually, uh, we have different oil price ah, scenarios. Ah, okay. And so uh, depending on the oil price scenario, it's, it, it, it goes from $30 per ton okay. to $40 per ton. I see. Thank you very much. One more question, if I can, about Iran. Total announced withdraw the big money investment from Iran because of the possible sanction, secondary sanction of the United States. The European Union prepared this special clearing house mechanism for the investment to Iran. With, even with this program, Total continued, I mean, has determined to withdraw and not using this mechanism. No, but I, I think it was, maybe my colleague Bertrand is, is, is knows th that better than I do, but I have the microphone, so I, I, I take advantage of it. But yes, if you want. But what, what, what I can say, it's very clearly, uh, and it was mentioned by uh, Mr. Trichet uh, today. I mean, th there is absolutely no question, given the retaliation from the U.S. We are listed company in the U.S., and we have more than uh, one-third of our shareholders, which are American uh, investment firms or pension funds. Uh, there is no way that uh, we are just going to ignore that part. Uh, one, uh, uh, that, that's too important for us. And on top of that, I should mention, uh, we had this um, project in Iran, as you rightly mentioned, but did not commit that much money, actually. That was money to be, to be spent in case we would have had the, the clearance, and we didn't have it. Thank you very much.